Hey there, let's talk Thursday NBA, and we're going to talk about searching for the secret formula. It doesn't have to be a secret, but we're searching for it, and it's kind of a secret because we're trying to find out what distribution of different stats and factors that we have recorded for NBA teams, how much of each one of those matters? How do we figure that out? Um, that's one of the, the benefits of this macro-enabled um, Excel file that projects NBA games. One thing it does is it looks for many different distributions. And I'm going to talk today in a more technical video. This is not for the faint-hearted. This is if you're using the NBA algorithm, you want to use it to its potential, because I'm getting asked, uh, asked questions about the testing cube and what's going on here. So let's get into it and explain it. It's kind of cool if you care about running simulations and probability scenarios and just ways of coming to the conclusion about what you want to populate here when looking at the strength of a team. You know, do we care a lot about wins and losses? Do we care a lot about possession of the ball or margin of victory of games or steals or rebounds? I, I don't know the answer to that question. I test a bunch of different numbers to try to come up with an answer to that question. And these are the different combinations of numbers. And I just had it create things randomly. Like we can, we can change all of these right now if we want to. We have a, a bunch of formulas here and uh, I'm just randomly creating a number and plugging it in here. Now, what's interesting about this is this changes like every time you click a button, I think. This random number generator will change and then you can bring in and paste it over the current combinations that you have. Or you can manually create a combination. Why don't you do that? For example, um, let's manually create one. And it'll become part of our testing philosophy. I'll say we care a little bit about wins and losses. Only 1% about wins. Number of losses, negative 3%, let's say. Points per game. I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent of points per game. I like possession. I like margin of victory. Defense matters too. I just keep handing out 10%. Rebounds, sure, 10%. Block, 10%. Uh, Three-pointers made, I'll give 5%. Offensive rating, 10%. Defensive rating, 10%. Field goal percentage, 1%. Now that adds up to 104%. It doesn't really matter. It's going to affect your margins a little bit, but it's not really that big of a deal. If, if anything, you can uh, you know bring something down like um, I'll bring I'll bring margin of victory down to six percent to make it an even one hundred. You can do whatever you want, and especially if you're someone that watches basketball and has your own idea about which stats you think are important, this is where you would start to just randomly plug in your own distribution. Once you've done that, that distribution you created becomes combo number one. What is combo number one? Combo number one helps us project games of the day by simply typing it in the toggle combo number. We're now looking at combo number one. And now what you have to do is refresh your pivot table because it wants to read the new combo number one is going to project these scores. You refresh and this is your look for the day. Things moved around slightly. Projected scores over here are going to change slightly. Everything's going to change based on the new combo number that you've created. And that is ed fully editable in the combination testing and you can create random numbers if you just want to create it real fast, which is what I did originally. Now, after you run the macro that simulates all hundred of these scenarios, it goes into this thing called the testing cube, and then it gets fed into what's called the compare pivot sheet. When you look at the compare pivot sheet, we're looking at yesterday's results. You can see that it shows you by wins and losses how many of the combinations resulted in the projected outcome, meaning we had the Cleveland Cavaliers to win this game in a hundred, hundred of the combos said Cleveland. Like if you open up and you see all the different combinations, there were combinations that are going to range from different margins. So you'll see a high, low margin. This is, this is the combination number. 
And you can start naming them too. If you don't want to change them, you have certain combinations that you like. You can name them. You can be like, here's my one that's really heavy on offense. Here's my one that's heavy on defense and blocks. Like you can name them different things when you weight them. I've done that before. It, it, it does serve an interesting purpose when comparing for the day. But you have margins here varying from, you know, 3%. Like you can sort this by the range of margin. So we can say sort this descending by margin. And it will show you the high low of the range of how much this predicted the Cavaliers to win in all 100 combinations. Every single combination predicted that the Cavs were going to be, yeah, it was a 40 some percent margin or 36% basically all the way down to 8%, right? There was a combination that brought us down to 8% essentially. So it was pretty certain that in every combination it had Cleveland and Cleveland won. Now that worked out well for most of the games yesterday. However, you had, Sacramento in a hundred of the combinations and they lost and they lost by 13, I think like what on earth? Um, so I, I, if anybody watched that game between Sacramento, I believe it was Indiana. I'd like to know what happened there. The Sacramento was at home. and just got destroyed. Toronto was supposed to win a hundred percent of the time in the simulations. And they did come back to win. Philadelphia was injured. The Heat were 99, 99 times out of 100 have predicted the Heat, and they managed to win. Clippers had had 100 times, and they lost, though. So, I mean, it was such a one-sided day that you would have expected to actually win more games. But you can always run this, and you can even run it for today to speak more knowledgeably about the games for the day. For example, right now, we're looking at um, we're looking at the games and what it predicts. And after glancing at it, you can see the Knicks are injured, which is why they have this underdog line. Very difficult to play this game. Mavericks probably do win because the margin's only 7%. But we're at combo number one, which is one I created. Let's go to combo 69. The reason why 69 had been good in the past. I remember that. Um, we can do a test in a second, which we will do to take a look at the entire day, but just looking at one combo first, Magic are in a terrible line, but they are supposed to win. Uh, but that line's awful. Cleveland against an injured Nets, minus 245. This is probably a, a good win. This is reminiscent of the Toronto game yesterday, although Brooklyn has more injuries. Margin here, 15%. That's pretty strong. So Cleveland to win would be on here. The Knicks are injured, so I just stay away from these injured games because you just don't know what's going to happen. But you, you know to stay away from the Knicks. They would win normally, but with the injuries, probably not. Nuggets over Lakers, who have some injuries. Minus 162. This is also good. Cleveland and Denver. Phoenix over the Jazz. 11% margin. Line's not great, but it says they'll win. Bulls against a more injured Memphis, minus 230, but Memphis's injuries are really significant. But so are the Bulls, too. So be careful with that. But it does say the Bulls. Timberwolves as an underdog over the Bucks. Here they've got a 4% margin in this scenario, and the Bucks are slightly injured. This is probably a win for Minnesota on the road. They can do it there. So that's the underdog. Pacers over the Warriors? Really? Weird. Notice the margin's really low here. Portland against Detroit, both super injured down here. Very unpredictable. Now, that being said, guess what? Let's go into our, our testing cube, and we're going to run today. So we clear out yesterday's stuff because you don't want to you don't want to compound the two. And here's the other thing you have to do. We have to change the area we're going to test. We were testing the games from the seventh. It's called this cube history up here. We need to change that to the eighth, to the games from the eighth. You have to go into the name manager and change this range to just the games from the eighth. And this will be today's games. You hit the check mark here, which, which then freezes. And then when you go look at your cube history range, it's now the games from the eighth, right? That's important because when you run the macro, 
it's got to pull the right range. And so we've changed the range and now we're going to run the macro. So we cleared out our testing cube data sheet. So there wasn't any, any game simulation data in there. And now we're running the simulation for today's games after all your, if you've updated all the stats and um, injury report for today, Thursday, February 8th, which is what I have already done. So now we're going to get a hundred simulation look at these games and see if it's in the same order as combo number 69. And also it's nice to look at that distribution of how many times it kind of picks one team to win and how many times it doesn't when running the different simulations. Cause I, I think yesterday was somewhat abnormal in that it was like a hundred to nothing almost every time uh, for, for almost all those games. Um, and I don't think, I think some of the games should be closer than that. And we'll see with the lower margin games, what that result is today, as we have about 10 more combinations to automatically run through in the macro. And then we can take a look at it. So that runs the hundred combinations. It leaves us at combo 100, which is not combo number 69. So this is a different look right here. We'll go back to 69 because that's what we were originally looking, looking at. And now we go into the compare pivot sheet and you refresh the compare pivot sheet. And when you do that, you're going to get today's games and today's look, and you can start collapsing it by team to get uh, average margin and average raw points. And let's take a look at that. As you can tell, Orlando is going to be on top, but they're at that minus 550 line. So I don't really know what to what to tell you about that. Cavs, 9% margin, Knicks, Suns, Nuggets. So it does have the Pistons and the Trailblazers a little bit. Um, just slightly. What how many times does it have the Pistons? It's got the Pistons, how many times, Detroit? One time in combo number 84. So what is up, the, that, that's so weird, right? One of these combinations, only one of them, resulted in the Pistons winning this game by margin. That's so interesting that I wanna look up combo number 84. So let's look up 84, because supposedly it's gonna have the, the Pistons beating Portland. I know I'm focusing on, there it is. Uh, it's a combination string that is filled with a lot of rebounds. So probably Detroit's shooting is so bad that they're just getting some more rebounds because they're just missing shots. Or maybe their defense is so bad they're allowing shots and not all of them are going in. They're playing so much defense that they have more rebounds than other teams. Not a great reason to uh, to pick Detroit. But that's the factor that is driving this game and putting it the one combination in favor of Detroit. Generally not going to be the case, right? It's it's generally put, but notice that the raw points is a raw margin of victory, which is kind of interesting because we saw numbers yesterday of like 1,000, 180 and stuff like this was up here instead of seven. Those means those that means those games were so much more widely uh, projected to have huge differentials in points. They were so lopsided, which shows that these games are closer. So Minnesota gets a 3.4% and 204. Pacers, then the Bulls, then the Nuggets. How does this compare to the combination string of 69 that we were basing it off of? Because you do kind of need to base it off of one combination string. Magic Cavaliers. So when we look at that, Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, everything's about the same order. Notice that the average margin for the Timberwolves is less than um, less than the combo we're using. So it brings them down to 3%. And 
are, you know, are games toss ups that are below 10% margin? The answer is in NBA, they're not really supposed to be, but certainly 5% margin cutoff is, is pretty good. You can see the difference here, uh, which is there's a, there's a drastic disparity in the comparison in these games, which means you're not going to hit this game 90% of the time. Like you're going to hit this game like 55% of the time. So it's, it's kind of a toss up and all of these games, essentially it would say our toss ups down here, which leaves you with more solid picks being the bulls, the Suns, the nuggets, the calves, these lines right here. And a four team round Robin is not awful there. I mean, they got some minus two hundreds and minus one sixties, but you know, it's not like minus 800, like yesterday. Oh, sorry. And, and the, you know, that's right. And you can consider if you want to get, get lucky, maybe you catch the Timberwolves and you go for it. Especially because of this injury right here to the Bucks. Like who's injured on the Bucks? I know it's a long video, really extensive, but this is this is really what you can do with this thing. Where, where are you, Bucks? So game time decision. There's a lot of game time decision people. Holy mackerel. Giannis. Oh my goodness, the whole team's a game time decision. Another reason not to make a decision on that game until you get a finalized injury report. Game time decisions are questionable things. Um, and there's a lot of them today. So when speaking about what these injury numbers are finally going to be, good idea to wait. But if you don't wait and you make something, it is Cleveland, Denver, Phoenix, and the Bulls. simply because Orlando would also be on there, but the line is so bad that it makes it kind of not worth it. All right. So that's the NBA update. That's how to use the combination testing sheet. And if you want to purchase a copy, because the NBA videos will stop. I will not be doing NBA the entire season. I just don't watch it enough um, to know. And I, I'm more into college basketball because it's, there's so many games. It's, it's a data delight to, to go through a hundred games. Um, it's fun. Because there's so many that no human being can watch all those games. You kind of have to use AI. As for NBA, you can watch a lot of NBA and get to know your team. And I'm sure there's more that goes into that. I just don't watch enough NBA to follow it. So you can purchase a copy on the website. And I'll always give you an updated version that I have. Um, and you can start using it yourself if NBA is your sport. And that's what you want to follow. All right. Good luck. <clears throat> May those four picks. Cleveland, Denver, Phoenix, and Chicago. May they win here on Thursday and good luck and may all your picks be late.